Okay. We are back here on the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show. We don't have a lot of time left necessarily. Um, Dr. Logan, let me ask you this, because I think that we're kind of at this point. This is the 4th of July weekend. You know, we're halfway through the summer. The realities are, I, I don't see an end to any of this in the near future. I think we're going to still be dealing with a lot of race-related issues mm-hmm. um, that society is processing a lot differently than we are. How do we do that? I mean, how do we... We talk about all these stresses and there is stress connected to 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 America finally dealing with systemic racism that we've always known all along that was there. Um the, good question, I know. There's a deeper level yeah. in the context of race. I I'll take what you just said and I'll put it in the context of living in a race conscious culture. There are five factors that activate a threat reaction at the level of the mind body. Remember I talked about the part, the part of the brain that ensures our survival? It reacts to these factors as if it's a threat to our safety and our life and well-being. The first one is status. Where are we in the social hierarchy? If we're at the top, we're at the, if we're at the bottom. If we're at the bottom, we ex- experience more stress and a threat to our safety and well-being. The other one is certainty. How certain am I of how my life is going to be? How much do I have locus of control over my life. The other one is autonomy. How independently can we act? We can't do that now with this coronavirus. The other one is relatedness. Who's friend or foe? Who am I safe with? Who's who's an us and who's a them? So those things that we're in, if we're always treated as a them, that activates a sense of stress and threat to life. The fifth factor is fairness. Am I treating? Am I treated fairly? Am I treating other people fairly? If we're treated unfairly, again, it activates the stress reaction that says, "Am I in danger? Am I safe? Or is there a threat to my life?" All five of those factors line up in the context of a race-conscious culture. So we're constantly dealing with that. So find people you're safe with. Set up maybe a routine in which you feel safe and can have authentic relationships. That also connects to the attachment process and how we're designed to be social beings. Also, how much independence can you exercise within the constraints of the COVID uh, quarantines and social distancing? And who do you feel that you're relating with in an equitable basis? So those are the, that's the short answer. That's a short answer. That's, That's a short, short and I know, and I knew going into it that was a loaded question. So yeah. I apologize for that up front. It's okay. I survived. So, <laughs> so he says, I listened to him going through those things. There was a heaviness that I felt again. So yeah, I mean, so it's kind of like so yeah. I feel like I'm now back. So what what am I gonna do with this? What it's, am I gonna do with this? It's real. You know, everything that he said is is it's real and it's it's a real experience. And I think, you know, before we can get into, you know, all of those those coping skills, we gotta first a- acknowledge that it's it's hard and that it is heavy. Because I think especially as black people, we're so used to just um moving throughout the day, just, oh, I've, I've been through worse, I'm strong, this is this is how things have always been, but just taking that pause and acknowledging that this is hard and, and this isn't right, and, you know, um, my feelings are valid, I have permission to be angry, um, because for, for so much, you know, that's part of, you know, systemic racism, you know, the gaslighting, you know, the rationalizing, the, the justifying that we, um, we, we often aren't aren't feeling or feeling. So acknowledging that it's hard and just acknowledging whatever intense emotion that you're you're experiencing, that it's not right or wrong, good or bad. And when, once you acknowledge it, then we can move to a place of what I like to call completing that stress cycle. You know, um, I know people often say, man, being black is hard. Being black is exhausting. And I want to reframe that the experiences are hard and, and the experiences that we have are exhausting. Being black, you know, can, can be a beautiful thing. So the stress that we experience every day, a lot of times those things are out of our control. So those external stressors, those are things that we're not going to be able to control. But what we can control is our response to them. And that's why I say, you know, doing some type of physical movement and you know, some might, someone out there may be thinking like, well, I don't have time to get outside. 
you know, I don't feel safe going to the gym, even though the gyms are, are, um, are open now, but I'm not saying that we have to do a high intensity interval training. It could be something as simple as stretching. It could be something as simple as walking around your house, but some type of movement, even if you have to have a good cry, it's okay to cry. Um, I, I think that's another you know stigma that, that gets attached that it's, it's not healthy to cry. It's absolutely healthy to cry as long as we're crying with poor purpose, um, as long as we know the reason that we're crying. So having a good cry, screaming in the pillow, doing some type of stretch, stretching or movement to move that energy through our bodies. And Dr. Logan, we got about 45 seconds left. What's the one thing you want people to walk away from this conversation? I, I want to reinforce what Sister Cerise just said. Move that energy through your body. Move it out do something to activate a sense of agency and self-empowerment. That's what keeps you healed from being traumatized. When you, when you lose your power, that's when you're susceptible to post-traumatic stress. The other thing I like what she said is that, what meaning do you assign to your experience? What's the story or narrative you tell yourself based on what you experience? Is it defeating? Is it more frightening? Or do you find some resources within yourself that you can acknowledge? So I just want to reinforce what Sister Sharice just said. Indeed. Well, I thank you both for joining us today. And like I said, I don't think any of this is going to be over soon. So you two might have to come back. We might have to have this conversation Thanks again. For I'm not you. going anywhere. I'll be here. I'll be here. I'm not coming, I'm right. not coming out till January. There you go. <laughs> Thanks so much. Have a great 4th of July weekend. We'll take a break. I'll come back and wrap all this up. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for the invitation.